Hey, Alexa. Play Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker. I have music or video for that. You can say play music or watch video. Play music. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Racers News Network Live. We are back for this week. Um, Pete is out there in the internet, never, never land, trying to get reconnected. But uh, he should be joining us ever so shortly. But we have as our guest tonight, uh, an old buddy of mine, um, known for six, eight years, something like that. Um, of course, I'm talking about Steve Musser of the, the Time Bomb Nostalgia Funny Car Team, uh, based out of Pennsylvania. Um, and they are, in my opinion, from what I've seen of their performances, one of the top nostalgia teams going, especially here on the East Coast. Um, Steve's heavily involved in the nostalgia funny car scene and the nostalgia scene in general, and also um, had his hands in uh, some top alcohol dragster stuff. So we've interviewed Steve a few times before and uh, looking forward to talking to him again here in just a few minutes. Um, before we kick off, the show though um i would like to say a very sorry um to the family of roger richardson uh who passed away um i believe today or yesterday um he was the photography director for competition plus for a number of years um so i want to say a big sorry for the loss of roger he was definitely one of the tops in drag racing photography in the entire country Unfortunately, a lot of people are. We're get. I'm getting older. I hit the double nickel yesterday, so it's it's that time of that time of life where things start to change and it sucks. I didn't know him personally, but I definitely see. I've seen him at the track, seen his work, and it's going to be a huge loss for the drag racing community. But switching gears to my buddy, of course, I'm talking about Steve Musser. Uh, so like I said, Steve is the current owner of the Time Bomb Funny Car Team and the marketing director and the transportation coordinator and yeah. uh, pretty much in charge of damn near everything except driving. We got to keep Bobby in line. Um, so how are you, Steve? I'm good, sir. I'm good. How are you? Awesome. I am doing fantastic. Um, like I said, I've known you for a, a while and you, you've About kind of had... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, You've had your hands in a, in a lot of different things in the world of drag racing, and it definitely seems like you enjoy the the nostalgia stuff a lot. Or you you know you wouldn't have taken over the ownership of Time Bomb, and we'll talk about the other car uh, a little bit later on. So, kind of fill us in on you and this drag racing scene and how you got into it. Um. Well, I would say 2010. I actually started. I went, I was straight into uh top alcohol racing with Lou Scrow and that lasted for about a year. And then I went to Rocky Perone and I met Tom Fox there. And from there I went to the time bomb and Tom Fox's dragster team. I was kind of a specialist back then. I was a guy that if you needed money, I could find it. I was pretty good at, at marketing things and, and finding a way to present things and, and, being that guy that actually got checks and put them in people's hands, which is one thing I'm proud of. Cool. Uh, yeah. So, and then I, and then I went from then, then I, well, I've been with the time bomb since 2000, end of 2012. And I was with Fox for 10 years till 2011 till maybe 12 there till 22 is when I, I kind of, move my focus to my funny car team. I, I'm going to phrase that move my focus to our funny car team, which is a group yep. deal for us. Cool. Now, obviously we're talking about the time bomb car. Now Rocky started that team a long time ago. And yeah. obviously, unfortunately we lost Rocky a few years ago. Um, yeah. What was it like being involved with, I've I've had the opportunity to meet him through you um a number of times and 
the dude had a had a personality bigger than life itself. I think yeah. it's, a, it's a fair assessment. Yeah. So, um, you know, Rocky and I, we it was it, at the beginning, it was pretty, it was just a strange and different relationship. Whereas, you know, Bobby Toth is the one that kind of moved me into the time bomb deal. And, you know, I told Roxla, I said, just sit back, shut up and hang on and I'll show you how we can make this thing haul ass. And that's truth. And Roxla did did not like that. He did not want a partner. He did not need a partner. You know, he didn't he didn't really want to to go that route. Rocky and I went from being partners to being best buddies to he became like a second father to me. Kind of that's kind of the 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 stepping stone process with with rocky and we and I, I miss him dearly it, it really it hurt me bad it, it i anybody that knows me knows i did not do well with him passing away i still don't do well with it but doing a little better now and yeah he was larger than life he was a he was a big deal to me um you know i learned how to do a lot of stuff with the funny cars through him through his what we called his charm school which was, you know, he, he'd smack you in the face of the torque wrench, and that's kind of how you learn. But it, it was all in love, and, and uh, you know, he wanted things done a certain way, and, and uh, you know, he was a good teacher, no doubt. Very cool. One of the moments that I remember about him was, it wasn't too long after you first introduced me to him, when we all met up at um, PRI. We were over at the yeah. football stadium. And you're like, hey, you know, this is this is the these guys and so on and whatever, and you know, shaking hands and walked up and like, hey, Rocky, what's up? He's like, hey, Chris, how you doing? Go give me a beer. Ha. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That sounds that's that's rock. He was a tough <laughs> sop man. He was. He, a lot of people only knew he was a tough man. Yeah, very very cool dude though. Now, making the transition from the tom's um alcohol dragster to run in a nostalgia car uh, was it as difficult as some people might think it is or was it pretty straightforward no it was easy i mean honestly just simply because i was always running the time bomb with rocky you know the whole time i just wasn't focusing as much on it but the time bomb was always being you know i had my hands in it the entire time i was with fox i was just burning the candle at both ends literally burning at both ends right so you know i i put a lot of resources into fox's deal personal and sponsors and then i you know i put a lot of stuff in the time bomb most of what went into the time bomb was personal with me and then a few sponsors that i had at the time which uh, oh, Matt, Matt Vick Hill was one that came on board, one of my buddies from high school. And he helped us tremendously get to that next level where we started getting a lot of better parts and pieces and we could run the car harder and it went faster. And then we lean on it and it went faster. Now, actually, actually now that Pete's on, I want to just take a quick second. So sure. please bear with me, Steve. Yes, sir. Um, Steve, this is my my partner in R and N, Pete Sanka. Pete races um division one up here. He races mostly Super Street and then on occasion Super Gas if they don't have Super Street in an event that he's okay. he's going to. Um, Very cool. he actually he races a Vega. Oh nice. Yes, sir. Seventy two or seventy four? Seventy seven, believe it or not. Oh, it's a seventy seven okay. wagon. Interesting hey. choice, but that's cool. Hey, any Vega it's not a drag race till an F in Vega shows up, right? That's Pete? right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for being unfashionably late. That's okay. uh, we, we had some technical difficulties. I was actually on before you, but it didn't last very long. So uh, we're back. Uh, but it's awesome to have another Vega brother on the show. Yep. Um, tell us, uh, I don't know how much you guys have covered so far, but uh, give us some specifics about the car. Uh, wheelbase, who built it, all that good stuff. Uh, it's well, the time bomb's a 118 inch wheelbase car. Uh, Rocky Rocks allow basically build it, um, all but and it's uh, it's a 72 Vega, it's blown, it's got a 526 Hemi in it with a 1471 Little Field supercharger, which is legit. You know, Little Field, we don't have one of those big blowers like the some of these other guys do, right? And we run we run an MS, the Mag 22. Um, we have uh, you know, Aries pistons in it. We have GRP rods. I got a, a Crower crank in it. 
I have a brand new bullet cam going in it actually tomorrow. Bob and the guys are coming out to do some work on it, get yep. her freshened yep. up. But that's and then we run, you know, we run Hoosiers, we run M and H tires when we can get them. Um, we run it on, you know, straight. We run it on M one. Um, nice. That's about it. I mean, there's, it, you know, we're, unless you, you're going to get down to the nuts and bolts, like what plugs we use. And stuff, yeah, but no, that's, good. that's pretty good, what, I think. Well, how many cubic inches is the engine? Five hundred twenty-six. Is that a limit for your class? No, no. You can run whatever the hell you want. I mean, okay. guys run Chevys, guys run Hemis. You know, they like, bigger Hemis. There's uh, typically the five twenty-sixes is what people have in them, but there's there's smaller yeah. versions out there. Yeah. What's uh, what's your best performance to date? Um, our best run was uh, six forty four at two hundred, I think two nineteen or two twenty one, oh, something yeah. like that. That was at Cecil County. Oh, nice! I rem- I rem- that was our last race ever with Rocky on the track, physically there with us. And I know Rock was struggling in the heat, and just to be there and. Right. He told Bobby, you stand on that mother effer. And Bobby did. And we wanted to see what it would do and which was cool. And it came back clean too. Well, we didn't bang it. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yep. And we've been in the six fifties more. I can't even, you know, so many times I can't remember, you know, I mean, we run so many six fifties, six sixties, stuff like that. Right now we're kind of in the mode of, cause we're trying to get some better parts in it. Just waiting for things that they've been purchased, waiting to get them um, in our hands. But, you know, I mean, for the most part, we got a new, you know, new crank in there, new cam in there, new rods in there, new pistons in there. Um, all the important stuff, I personally think, um, the the wearable stuff and rotating assembly, things like that is all good. I got new new victory valves in there. I mean, we got some good shit in there. Good. Very cool. What uh, what are your racing plans for the rest of the year? Um, Right now, we're going to... We're going to Dragway 42, which I've never been to, which I am just excited as all get out to go to. And we're going to race for Don Moyer, this rock and race. It, it's, it just looks cool as the day is long. I actually called him up and said, I want to come to your race. Just for, oh, not, cool. not, not for nothing, but the, uh, just for the music alone. I mean, the lineup <laughs> of music is stellar. And, uh, you know, I was, I was pretty grateful that, that he would add us, um, you know, after the fact, the show was done, put us in. But, I, you know, our reputation got us in that one for sure. Nice. And then and then after that, we're going to go to um, Bud's Creek, Maryland, and we're going to run the uh, Chaos Race. But in between there, I plan on – we're going to make some hits here and there. I don't know where. Um, more than likely, it'll be at Maple Grove as I plan on getting a new driver licensed in the funny car. Oh, cool. So I believe he's already licensed, but more more importantly, I want to make sure he's comfortable in our car. Sure. Right. Uh, how many? Okay. How many? Sorry, Chris. How many different drivers have you had over the years? Bobby! Bobby! Hey! <laughs> it's Bob's world, and we just live in it, sir. Excellent. So, and Bob's going to continue to drive the car till he don't want to. I told Bob that many times. He can do whatever the hell he wants. It, you know, he can drive it till he doesn't want to. I just like the chance to maybe put my buddy Brian Conray in there. And, you know, he's in the top sportsman class. He's very – he's t- number three in points right now. He's very competitive, very, very uh, good. Yeah, Brian's player. actually a former guest on the show. Yeah, Brian Conray. So he's yeah. a very, very close friend of mine. We've been talking about it for years. And I don't think it's bad to have, you know, a backup driver if sure. something would happen because we really don't have that right now. We used to have that with uh, – we, we had Brian Golick with a phone call away, but, you know, that's not the case anymore. So so I'd like to get a guy that can can be there if and when we need him. And then also I'd like to be able to maybe compete at some of these uh, – not some, it, the chaos race. You know, yeah. put, a hit, put a hitter in there. I like it. A difference maker drive, if sure. you will. Now hitting on the on the funny car chaos stuff a little bit, Steve. Do you think that's the the wave of the future for no, what's going to without a doubt? I I think every every single I my personal opinion I think every single match race should be run in that format. I think you should be allowed to bring what you what you built, run what you brung, do a hard charge and badass burnout. You know, may do a couple dry hops for a cherry on top and put the hammer down and see what it does. But that's just me. 
You know, a lot of guys don't disagree. They or they don't agree with me. They disagree with me when it comes to that stuff. But this, which, that's fine. That's why there's all different kinds of racing. That's right. I love it. Now I with cables it. too, you have all kinds of different power adders too for the funny cars. Correct? It's not just injected or blown. It's pro charged, turbo charged. Uh, you know, freaking damn near everything. Yeah. No, it, without a doubt. I mean, some of these pro charged cars, and there's some out there that are. There are a few injective ones that are just, they're sick as far as the way that they're engineered and how, just how cool that they are. You know, I, and I think that's what makes it special is it's a variety of different race cars is really cool for the fans. And number two is I think everybody gets a chance to race because I think everybody should have a chance to go out and participate and run a car that they broke their ass, their bank blood sweat and tears they put into it everybody should have to have a chance to race a few couple three times a year if they want to and you know unfortunately sometimes it's not the case for some people you know and it's 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 a shame very cool now expanding on that just a little bit more now originally there was the another color in the in the musser mix um i don't know if you want to talk about the the cherry bomb a little bit yeah. So the cherry bomb is close to being done. The cherry bomb, it's sitting, the, the body is complete and finished. A wonderful man named Jeff Davis got it painted for us. Jeff and his, his uh, son in law, Jeff, did it for us. It's beautiful. Glenn lettered it. It's done. It's tin. It's treed. It's powder coated. It's a complete finished, ready to put on a race car body. At this point in time, we're waiting for the chassis, which is a new chassis, to be updated and finished by Danny Sweetman. And Danny's, I have all the confidence in the world with Dan that he's going to give us just a bitching piece of machinery, you know, and I think it'll be great. So once we get that chassis back, which we expect to get back in the next couple, two or three weeks, my plan was, because we're so far into the season, to maybe try and do something with it next year, but you know, Danny laughed and said, now nah, Bobby's going to have that thing out in the track by the end of the summer. <laughs> so, you know, and again, it's Bob's world. I just live in it. You know, I mean, we do have we have, we do have actually two separate funny cars. I don't have one. I'm going to rebody. I have two separate funny cars. Um, we have most of what we need to do it. I have confidence that my partner, Randy Moore and myself, who Randy's come on board and he's been a enormous help enormous help he basically res- rescued us from the abyss where i didn't know what we were going to do and you know now we're getting better parts better pieces and i think the cherry bomb will move along a little bit quicker um you know i'm, I'm hoping it would be really cool to have it out at the end of the year but you know i'm being realistic because i've been doing this a long time and i know what what's what it probably you probably won't see it till next year but the good news is is we have a funny car that runs, you know, 650, 660s at 210, 215, no problem. Right. So it's not like we're waiting for it to get out to see what we have a car that does something. And, you know, it's not a it's not a bad little hot rod. Are we going to see you at the Dover race? Uh, you will not. You will, will not. not. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Fair let enough. me ask you a question. What kind in a perfect world, if you had to draw it up on a piece of paper? Uh, going from the car that you've raced for years to a brand new piece that you're going to be debuting. I mean, obviously you're going to have some new car workouts and I don't oh, want to yeah. call them blues, but you know how it goes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, when, when it's all said and done and the dust is settled, what kind of a performance increase are, could you expect, are you hoping for from tried and true to brand new? Um, you know, my expectations would be, and again, that's going to land on Reverend Johnny, Bobby, Randy, Keith Decker, one of our value crew guys, Luke Ellis. Um, I, you know, I have a certain area that I want to be in. I'm trying to choose my words carefully. You yeah. know, I want to be down. I want to get down and run somewhere in the neighborhood of Rocky Perone and keep him honest. Um, you know, and, and try and be at least close to him. I don't think we can run 16s, but I don't think we we shouldn't be able, with this power plant that we have now, we should be able to run 630s with a 125 car and, you know, better arrow, a lot of sure. other things that are advantage. So, I'm, I mean, if we lean on it, it's a 50 car with a snub-nosed Vega, you know? It's like a snowplow. Yeah. 
So yeah, right. I'm I'm, I'm thinking, you know, six thirties, six twenty, somewhere in that neighborhood nice. stretch. You know, just, what, I just want to run with the guy. I have a lot of respect for Rocky Perone. He's a badass. And I got a lot of respect for George Hollywood Ridenauer, who is also a badass. And these guys yeah. want to haul ass. And I would like, if I'm on their rear bumper, I'm happy with that. You know, I don't have to go quicker than them. I just want to be in the same ballpark as them. Are you allowed to say what the new body style is before you debut? Oh, sure, yeah. I, so I've already, it's already been out. It's a 74, okay. it's a 74 slant nose Vega. Oh, okay. So you're sticking with Vega. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what Rocky wanted. So, you know, before he passed away, we had, you know, we had this chassis hanging up in the rafters I had bought years before. And, you know, he passed away. And so we had had some ideas. And believe it or not, the time bomb is he came up with that name. And we used to argue about what the new name was going to be for the new funny car. And down in his shop, I'll be damned if he didn't have cherry cherry bomb you know the hand shit the oh hand the hand stuff. stuff yeah 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 i'm stuff yep i go in there to you know go to the bathroom and clean your hands and cherry bomb cherry bomb and after doing that for a couple of years i'm like yo jackass let's call it cherry bomb <laughs> he's like no i don't like that man I, I, let's do something else and then i wore on him a war on him and you know unfortunately we ran out of time with with him but you know right. he was warmed up to the idea and uh so you know it's 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 going to be cherry bomb and a lot of, a lot of, uh, yep. A, lo a lot of, uh, a lot of it is just stuff that's maybe just a, just a hair out of my reach before things weren't used to not be out of my reach. But now where I'm at in life now, it's just, it's a lot to take on. Sure. Um, but you know, we're going to do it because I feel a strong sense of that. You know, I, I, I want to try and get to the finish line with that and at least get it out there. And I'd like to see these two, two cars lined up against each other. Very cool. I want to get the picture, hang it in my basement, maybe say something to old rock up there and just show right. them that hey, we did it. And then after right. that, it's all grave. You know, if we keep running, we keep running. If we don't run, we don't run. I'm not going to, sure. you know, we've done it. We've done a lot over 14 years now, 15 years. My family has in racing, my wife and my kids and stuff. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. How, long, how long has it been since he passed? Uh, he died in November of 2019. Gotcha. He's, he's right. <laughs> oh, very cool. I like it. Yeah. yeah. They're out on my back deck window all the time. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, Rocky was Rocky was a cool dude. I I got the chance to meet him as Steve and I talked about a little while ago, you know, numerous times because of um, Steve, and he he was a cool dude. There's no doubt about it. So I can, I mean I can see what you're like when you talk about him, and that's not uh, a casual acquaintance by any means. So no, uh, you still got fun. a purpose with what you're doing. It's cool to see that uh, that he's still involved. Uh, yeah, quite he, a bit, even though he's not here, you know? No, that's cool. I like the way that you said that, without a doubt. He's still involved. He's always on my mind. You know, yep. when I get to the racetrack, I think of him often. And I'm grateful for that. That's awesome. That's uh, that's not a, a friendship or a partnership that comes along very often. So No, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's more like I was his evil, bad son, and he had a tour <laughs> friend, and I did what he said. <laughs> you were you were the devil on the other shoulder, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> without a doubt. More than you would know, uh, yeah. Steve, Steve took out both shoulders, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Very cool. So now, uh, now's the time when uh, you plug some of the people that help you out. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. I'd like to, uh, you know, especially to uh, to John Hale, who owns the Best of Texas Barbecue Sauce Company down in Dallas, Texas. He's been helping us for years, quietly. He doesn't take a whole lot of response, well, credit for it. Or he, you know, he's a quiet guy, but he's right. helped me tremendously with phone calls, texts, financially just be in there for us he's just a bitch and all-around guy and i'm very grateful and honored for him to be part of our racing deal um steve sucker is uh he's the owner of custom performance coating and they're down in beltsville maryland right. and if anybody needs any powder coating done any heat treated stuff industrial commercial racing you name it get in touch with me i'll get you in touch with steve he'll travel to you to pick stuff up and bring it back to you finished He's a stud. He worked with uh, um, 
Chuck Buckler for a while. So everybody knows who Chuck is. He paints Jib Head's Nitro Funny Car and yep. he's a genius artist. Um, and then, you know, so, uh, some of the other ones is, you know, Elmer. Everybody knows Elmer at Aries Pistons. Freddie Turs at VP Racing Fuels. He's helped us for years with fuel. He's a great guy. Um, got that deal for uh, pitting. We were pitting next to Dave Harada down to Charlotte at the Carolina Nationals. And we qualified for our first race. And me and Tommy Jr. were raising some serious hell. And they came over and said, who the hell are you guys? That's how we met them. And then the rest is history. And then that was in 2014. And VP's been helping me ever since. And then Pengrade won, um, you know, Pengrade High Performance Oil. Oil. Yep. That's Bobby Brophy and Ken Tiger's no longer with him, but he was a big part of, of uh, our deal, helping us, you know, to get oil. And we tried to help them in return by getting them customers and things like that. Um, the Vision Core Foundation, my youngest son, a lot of people know he's blind. So we try and do a lot for the charity end of things with the Vision Core Foundation. Um, and then I, I wanted to meet Peter Shore at the retreat. He just recently passed away. God rest his soul. But he helped us get off the ground. And when I say he helped us get off the ground, that's back when first started marrying together the top alcohol dragster and the time bomb funny car as a team type deal. And this guy, you know, these weren't five hundred thousand dollar checks. These are people who lose their shit in what we do over two and three thousand dollar checks. These these dwarf those. And he got us going with the top alcohol stuff. And it, it was just it, it was just a cool time because we had money rolling in parts and pieces and we were growing by leaps and bounds. And Peter helped that. He fed into that. Um, uh, that mindset of, you know, the best sales guy is the one you just made a sale, go get another, you know, and he would sure. help us push people our way. My buddy, Mike Real at Merck Construction, he helped me quite a bit. Um, racers, I feel very strongly about um, Jagger Naves and Bill Naves, Matt Stamball, Mark Lee, my West Coast buddy, phone call away. Dave Harada was instrumental in helping me get the VP racing deal. Um my my crew guys, my my graphic design guy Dan Gillespie, he owns a company called Hot Rod Portraits. My partner Randy Moore, he's been a huge help. He's learning his way around a funny car. He's is making he's moving at warp speed. It's like he's been doing it his whole life. Luke Ellis, Keith Decker, and then I have my secret sauce is Reverend Johnny. I don't know if if uh, <laughs> if Chris knows who Reverend Johnny is. Reverend Johnny is about as much of a reverend as I am a woman. You know, he's uh, <laughs> he ain't no reverend. <laughs> you, you remember, he had the pure hell altered. Or, oh, or yes, the, yes, no, yes. I'm sorry. I'm not pure hell. Help the hellbound altered Johnny. Yeah, he's been he's been with us for 10 years. He's he's just he's our secret sauce. He's a great guy. And um, Keith Decker helps us a lot. He's uh, kind of when we bang stuff up, he fixes things. He makes things look pretty. He helps us with the car at the shop here. Um. And then Bobby. I mean, what can you say about Bobby? He's the ringleader. It's Bobby's world. We all live in it. Bobby. Bobby. Yeah, yeah he's the guy. So and we have a pretty cool deal here where uh, if you ever hear me talk about it, 99% of the time I'll say us and we and our. I don't use terminology like I and me. I just don't like it because I feel like this is a combination of a lot of people putting a lot of effort in to make this car go down the track because it's not easy. It costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of time, and somehow we managed to keep this car together, this team together after Rocky passed away, and continue to do, to do this in his honor. I'm very grateful. I'm very proud of that. Very cool. Awesome. Sounds like you have a hell of a team built up there. Yeah. Oh, we do. I mean, we've been doing this for a while, and we 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 have guys that we share between you know Fox's team and our team, and you know I have a, a good group of guys that really. I mean, they're just, they're just great. And they sacrifice a lot. You know, like I said, I have a new partner. His name's Randy Moore. He's great. You know, he's, uh, he, it's our new, our new logo. You can see I'm kind of like the rock and roll stuff. Nice. So, ACDC style. Mustard yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm grateful for that. Um, it's given us an opportunity to just keep on keeping on. I think we're going to run maybe between six and eight maybe six, seven, eight races a year. That's where I kind of want to be right now. Yeah. For years, we did 12 to 15 with a top alcohol dragster, and we do 10 and 12 with time bomb. And I was looking at, 20, you know, it's 52 weekends in a year, and I'm racing 26 of them. You're halfway there. Yeah, right. I, I got a 15-year-old kid that just grew up, you know, and I missed a lot of it. 
Right. So I don't want I'm trying to try and slow that stuff down. Nice. Nice. Plus have, work, they hate it. Have you yeah, well, have you had the pleasure of meeting Jay Blake by any chance? Oh, of course. Absolutely. Jay's on my speed dial. My actually my it's funny, my wife is tighter with Jay than I am. She talks to Jay. <laughs> she just spoke to him last week. And Jay has sent my son, you know, for the since we've met him for the last probably four or five years, every year he sends him a Christmas gift, something That's blood awesome. related and stuff. And he sent him a click rule last year, which is really cool. You know, that's something that blind used to measure distance. Sure, yep. It's a neat thing. Cool. And uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's great. I'm trying. Well. I'm trying. I'm working with administration at the school I teach at uh, to try and get Jay in uh, to to do his thing and talk to the students. Yeah. Um, trying to get Jay isn't the issue. It's coordinating it with the school. That's the issue. Sure. Uh, because he's, you know him, he's always more than willing to do whatever he can oh, yeah. to help anybody that he can. Sure. He's a great guy. I mean, he, he really, really is. is just a, just salt of the earth. Great guy. Yep. Yep. So the story was, is incredible. Yeah. Uh, what he does is incredible. And, uh, you know, it's part of the racing family. So you know how that all goes. My little guy, Chase, come here. Come up here. He's listening. He's sitting down here. I'm up on the deck and he's sitting down. <laughs> Chaser, do you want to come say hi? He can tell him why you like racing. He won't come up. I tried. Told Chris. He won't. Huh? He's only yeah, nine. We tried, so we tried to get nine. him on before we came on. I, and, I uh, thought maybe I'd try. He, he wasn't having any of it. Yeah. That's He's the rock good. star in our family. That's for sure. Good. Good, good. So, now, do the, have the boys expressed any interest in getting more involved in the racing stuff? Chaser loves it. I mean, that kid, I'm telling you, he knows from hat to pan just about everything, where it is, what it's called, just by just by touching it. My 15-year-old could care less. He really? is into video games and fixing his hair nice. And, you know, he's a good <laughs> boy. He gets great. He's, he's almost a straight-A student in school, yep. but he just doesn't, he doesn't care about the racing end of things. Although gotcha. he does help us because I make him in the garage quite a bit. There so you go. He does do work. He does put in sweat equity. And that's right. that's pretty funny because I my son couldn't care less about yeah. anything automotive, but my stepson, he is all about it. He's got a car, he races, he comes with me all the time. So that's great. You, you never know where it's gonna fall in, but he just it does. Don't. I, yeah. you know, the kids got, we got an alcohol funny car sitting on jack stands. It's, you know, it's a 200 mile an hour car anywhere. We run it down a dirt road at 200 and he sure. just doesn't care. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. It's, it's just the way it is. You know, I don't want yep. to force him to do anything he doesn't want to do. Whatever is, he does is fine with me. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. You do be respectful, get good grades. And he does that. That's he the important that stuff. That's, that's the more important. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah without without doubt. a doubt. Well, Pete's still trying to get me to grow up and stop the light, stop liking road racing. Ah, there's nothing wrong with that. My, I have one saying: <laughs> all all racing doesn't matter what class you're in or what your genre is. All racing is good racing. Is good. I couldn't agree more. I I, I totally agree with that. However, Except. I don't want to learn anything because I like what I'm doing now. <laughs> it's yeah. fun. This brain could only handle so much stuff, and it's filled with drag racing. So I just no don't more have room. space to rent in the head. <laughs> I just uh, don't have head, any more room. Full of, <laughs> That's right. well, yeah. you, you know, it was stuff. limited capacity before drag racing. So that that just put it over the top. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Good. So, yeah, so, I mean, we're looking forward. I'm already looking ahead. I'm in, in, in this deal. I'm always thinking like, you know, five, six pool shots ahead. And I'm already thinking about next year now and, you know, where we're going to be in relation to the time bomb parts and pieces, where we're going racing with the new car, be ready, things like that. So as the owner, you know, that's something that I need to think about. And then we, as a team, we'll figure it all out together. Cause that's what we do. Oh. We, we all kind of land on the same, we're on the same page and I think it's a nice, you know, I look to Bobby for input, Randy for input. I look at Reverend Johnny for a lot of input. He's been great Hit me with advice and things like that and helping. And he's just there. And then, um, you know, we have Decker, he, we get his input and, uh, you know, we just, we're, we'll be off and running. I'm just grateful that we can take a car cause we heard it at an Ohio. Um, and, 
it just it we haven't heard it in like a year knock on knock on wood but it just shows you how quickly and humbly it can be when you bang it and the, the, you got to be ready to come back from that and we right. don't have a ton of parts under the bench you know i mean we have some we have more than some and less than some you know it, we we you need to have if you want to be able to run it you got to have parts to fix it because you can't get them we, we can't get them in any, any kind of timely fashion is that right it yeah it's difficult yeah, I've been waiting on sleeves for six, seven weeks now, and still not here. But that's okay, though. You know, we'll uh, we'll be fine without them. That's more. We're more about preventative maintenance. Bobby likes to run the car preventative to preventively. You know, yanking rods out at twenty runs, yanking pistons out at twenty five runs, pulling the crank at forty runs. You know, things like that where we try and run things um, with some some kind of thought process involved as far as being preventative and sure. you know, not blowing it up by just keep changing stuff out yep that's cool. i mean i certainly didn't learn that from rocky rocks <laughs> you know, <laughs> rocky didn't give a shit man he would throw stuff in there and just send it you know but make it a jewelry box and then you go from there <laughs> yeah god bless him though but you know he just wanted he wanted to run all the time you know I'm, and i'm just a little different my mindset where you know, we as a team, if we go out, we want to put on a good show. And we want the car to haul ass. And everybody says nobody cares about the times and the numbers and stuff like that. But that's bullshit. Why does everyone look at the scoreboard then? Why did you ask us what our quickest run is? You know, everybody yeah, exactly. wants to know what the car will run. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and, and saying it and doing it are two different things. You know, I think actions speak louder than words. And I think that you get a car that's running six seconds, 200 miles an hour consistently in this day and age, you got something. Sure. Not everybody can do that. Very cool. Amen. Well, like I said, you guys put on a hell of a show, having seen it in person and seen enough yeah. videos of it too. That you, you, you. Do, do put on a good show. There's no question about it. And anybody yeah. who says they don't care about the time is full of crap. So yeah. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. You got it, buddy. Well, listen, Steve. We're gonna cut you loose and let you go hang out with the boys. And. Bye. Uh, Thank you for coming on and hanging out. I really appreciate it. Like I said, you know, I haven't talked to you in a while, and it was good to, good to chat with you again. Yeah. Nice Steve, to catch a, up with you. God bless you. It was a All pleasure right. meeting you, and sorry I was late, but glad That's I was okay. able to jump on. Yeah, I'm, I, it was nice to talk to you too, Pete. Same. Yep. You guys have a good night. Keep running that Vega, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right guys. Steve, take care. Take care. Take care. Take care, care buddy. Buddy. Yep. All right, bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. All right, Steve Musser, the Time Bomb, Nostalgic Funny Car Team. Cool dude. Cool yeah, bunch of yeah guys. very cool dude. Yep. So it was a lot of fun. I mean, all, all right, cool so guys are running Vegas, so obviously he's well, cool. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I, said, I got to hang out with them the year that I went to PRI and uh, had, a, had a blast. Good, was, good. Was yeah, no, he seems like a great guy to hang out with. Yeah, him and, him and Tom Fox. It was him, Tom Fox, Bobby... Rocky, a couple other people. I don't remember who it was, but I, I either way, I, I had a good time, and I was, I was glad I got to meet everybody that I did through Steve. So, very cool. So, what's going on, pal? Nothing. School's over. Uh, shop is busy. I feel like I haven't talked to you in forever. Of course, I've been... it's been a while. I know we were off for a couple of weeks, and. I think I wasn't around for the week before, and yeah, I know. Yeah, and I was busy last week, so. Yeah, how you feeling today? You're looking pretty good. Um, I'm okay. Good, good. Pretty much go with I'm okay. Yeah. So, how many more treatments you got? You got to be winding down. Um, actually, last week we met with the with my actual oncologist, and she is saying, as of right now. End of September, uh, end of August, beginning of September. Okay. Um, and I go back to Boston and they do their thing, you know, all their testing and yep. they'll decide if I'm a, if I have to keep going weekly um, or if I can do what they call maintenance chemo, which I'm assuming is like, you know, once a month or once a month, something like that. Right. Yeah, whatever. But all my numbers are trending good. Everything's looking good. Um feel like crap but other than that i mean i didn't get sick last week i remember that 
Um, hope I didn't sleep. I'll yep. I literally was up all night, either reading or watching TV. Right. And um, hopefully won't get sick tonight. I don't care if I don't sleep because I'm on summer break, so I can sure. cr- grab a nap during the day. Um, but all in all, no complaints. Good, good, good. Well, whiny. fingers crossed you make it through the night without getting sick. And uh, <laughs> as far as as far as chemo fog, it doesn't really look any different than your regular fog. Then my, so. Yeah, then then my normal. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, I mean, I guess we could go over uh, some winners from the national event and stuff like that. But we all know what the big subject is right now. Yep, and I think we should hit on that. Um, let's do that, and then let's do the results afterwards. Okay. A um, little disturbing that we don't have any updates yet. And not disturbing because we're nosy and we need to know. Disturbing because I would think if uh, if everything was okay or going to be okay, that we would have known by now. Uh, right. That's a little... That's a little scary. I mean, the more time goes by, I would think the less chance of them making an announcement that he's got two broken ribs and a mild concussion and uh, he'll be racing again by the end of the year, you know? Right. Um, I I get the feeling that that ship probably has sailed, unfortunately. Um, I I did reach out to some friends of ours and they were not able to comment for obvious reasons right right Um, what what kind of ticked me off was um the interviews shortly after with the racers and how emotional they were um that it's kind of you don't normally see it when it's just a, a you know an accident and they get taken off to the hospital and and you know not a big deal. I mean, when grown ass men are crying, you kind of get the feeling that it's more than than what's being shown. Right, right. I mean, and then obviously the the guy is seventy five years old. Right. You know, we're we're in our fifties. We don't come back as quickly as we did twenty years ago. Amen to that, brother. Ten yeah. years ago. Yeah. And um, you know, so whatever is wrong, even if it's you know just a busted leg, a concussion, maybe some bruised ribs. That's that's I broke three ribs six seven years ago, and that was that was hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's nothing you could do for it except for walk on eggshells and let it heal, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't do really anything. Coughing's um, a nightmare, sneezing's a nightmare, the whole nine yards, right? Oh yeah, you know. And again, you know, he's not a spring chicken anymore. So right. whatever is wrong is, you know, who knows? This might be the career-ending explosion. You know what I mean? I, I got to tell you, I'm I fully expect it to be career-ending. Um, but I would love to be able to see him walking around at the track supporting his drivers and uh, you know with no with no side effects from this right that's i mean it it my opinion that's pretty much what i'm hoping for right now he's got i was talking to uh to david knapp today through facebook you know just on a post and you a couple of exchanges back and forth and we both agreed that i mean 10 years ago he had nothing left to prove he no. definitely doesn't have anything to prove now. No. Um, the only thing that I would have liked to have seen was him to be able to knock down another championship at 75 years old, I think would have been awesome. But the dude won 16 of them. And yep. he's winning races at 75 years old, and he's number two in points. And granted, yep. we're nowhere near the end of the season. Uh, but, I mean, so what? Uh, it's just it's super impressive oh uh, absolutely you know you just you wish he could have went out on his own terms instead of something like this and i'm talking like i know what's wrong with him and that he's all done and obviously right. none of us know that for a fact but um the what the what if what if this pretty is, much yeah yeah right you know, um the you know. the end the career ending you know injuries or whatever again right. not, we're not saying that 
we know anything because we don't Correct. We only know Correct. as much as everybody else does. Like I said, I, I would love nothing more three or four races from now to see him on the starting line cheering on the driver that they put in his seat to finish out the year. That, to me, would be the best possible outcome. Yep. I will. The one cool thing that I did get the opportunity to see at the national event in Epping, excuse me, was um, I think Brittany was second or third in line to run. And obviously he was up there on his scooter like he always is. Sure. And um, they did a salute to uh, first responders. Yeah. And he was on the side, he was on the, on the, the spectator side um, of the Jersey wall at New England. Yep. And he was the first dude, I happened to look over, he was the first dude to take his hat off when they did yep. the salute. Now we all know he's a space cadet. But, oh, he's nuts. Yeah, no, he's certifiable. And and you hope to God he doesn't have any form of a head injury because I don't know how much more that head could take. He's nuts. <laughs> he's he's absolutely nuts. If if he grew up 20 years ago, 10 years ago now, he would have been diagnosed with so many freaking things that they didn't even know of back 75 years ago. He would have every... ADHD, uh, you name it, he would have it. I'm convinced of that. Or uh, if it was fifty, or if he was fifty years ago, hell, sixty years ago, they he would have been locked up and they threw away the key. Yeah, yeah. And he's sitting there, he'd been in there banging on the door, going, "I want to go." Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's nuts, but I mean, you you can't deny what he's done for the sport. Oh, absolutely. And I actually, in scrolling through Facebook today. Excuse me. Oh. Here come the yawns. Um, going through Facebook today, uh, Charlie Yannetti hit the nail on the head. Uh, and I can't quote it because I don't remember verbatim what he said. But basically, it's like through the years, I've never been a huge John Force fan. Uh, but this is so much beyond um, rooting for a driver. This is a human being. Uh, and And – Arguably, there isn't anyone who's done more for the sport than him. And, you know, as a human, whether you're a fan or not, uh, you hope to God that, you know, he comes out of this unscathed and and could do things on his own terms instead of medically having to do things, you know. Right, being, being forced to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bear with me for just one sec. So I actually Absolutely. On that. Um, yep. I know Charlie, Charlie won't mind me reading it. Um, for those that know me, they, for those of for those who know me, you know that I'm not a big John Force fan or even a fan of John Force racing. But I'm getting a bunch of contacts asking what happened. Got to tell you, folks, this is a horrendous crash, and hopefully John Force will be okay. A lot of bench racers that have offered many opinions, and we'll talk about that. No. Uh -huh. so, as to what might have taken place and even what didn't take place or should have taken place. But at the end of the day, it's a man's life that matters. Thoughts and prayers to John Force and the family for a full and speedy recovery. And as Charlie always ends everything, hope we can all imagine that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Charlie's absolutely. been around a long time. So, I mean, for, uh, you know, he's not shy with an opinion. Right. We oh, we listen. We it's no secret to anyone that knows both of us on Facebook. Uh, we butted heads probably more than we haven't online, if I had to guess. Uh, but you know, uh, again, people could get heated with opinions and emotion, uh, but when it comes down to a racing family member, uh, there's no denying, you know, the, what he's done for the sport and. And what we're all hoping for an outcome. Absolutely. Well, we will keep this brief. But the vast right wing conspiracy came out in full force. Basically last night and this morning that, oh, they left, they left the, um, the tethers in the pins in, you know, and luckily a lot of, people produce pictures of the rear end of the car right. on the line during the past at the explosion. And I think I put one up of the, of it on the ramp truck where you could clearly see 
yeah, the yeah. rear end of the car and the parachute. So they weren't pinned. They wouldn't have the you know remove before flight right. tag. And, you know, for all the safety systems you have, let's face the facts. Sometimes shit happens. And yeah, I mean, first of all, happened. first of all, I want to know why is it a right wing conspiracy? It's always a right wing conspiracy. I don't know. Okay. I am Republican. It's you know, a conspiracy. Like... All right. Well, no, it's a dead center conspiracy. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Yeah, Fair no, enough. No. Hold on. Yeah, I I stick up. Yeah. Even though everyone thinks I'm a liberal Democrat, I have to stick up for my Republican buddies. <laughs> but, uh, you know, listen, it could be something as simple as now, again, I'm just talking. I've never sat in a funny car. I don't know anything about the safeties on a funny car. I do know when they're supposed to deploy. Uh, I know that they have activation through burst panels. I know they have activation through oil pan pressure. Uh, and I also know that when they cross a certain spot on the track above a certain mile an hour, it automatically deploys the chutes also. Um, that being said, I assume that they're air launchers. Uh, you know, I don't know if they have fail safes besides the air. Did the explosion take out the air so that they couldn't launch? Did the explosion bind up the cables so that they couldn't be pulled? We don't know. We have no idea. Right. But I guarantee you NHRA will figure it out. Uh, I also guarantee you that NHRA will probably learn something from this like they do uh, with all the accidents and hopefully do something about it. I mean, but to just try and put blame, listen, parachutes out or not, I don't know. I, my personal opinion is that that side slap is what did most of the damage. And I don't know that parachutes would have prevented that side slap. It might have slowed it down a little bit, but uh, – I don't know. With that fireball, it was wicked. That that was a wicked explosion. It hit that side barrier really, really hard. I mean, I didn't analyze the video, but from a little bit that I saw it, it looked like after the first explosion that it actually rainbowed the chassis. The chassis, to me, looked bowed before it even hit a wall. Now, again, I don't know if... I just saw it, uh, you know, I didn't super slow mow it and analyze it. Not that I would know what the hell I'm analyzing anyway, but I mean, that concussion was wicked. One of the things that I saw that really caught my eye, as strange as this may sound, I don't know what the tensile strength of the rear wheels are on those cars. Did you see that? I imagine it's quite hot. Yeah, the it looked like the whole inner rim was just sheared because that so thing was just what it, what it looked like to me is the barrel separated from the the center section the flange yeah. whatever the hell you want to call it but right. yeah i mean it was just it was violent on so many levels um you know just like uh, you hate to bring up something like this but when eric medlin passed away I mean, John and uh, and John Medlin is Eric's father, right? I think it's John and John. Um, I mean, they led the forefront in probably the most safety changes Top Fuel has ever seen. Um, you know, when when Daryl Russell passed away, uh, a piece of the the strut from the rear wing came through the back of the cage. Now they got the, the titanium hood, for lack of better terms, yeah. uh, that covers the whole top of the cage, the back of the yeah. cage, right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Scott Coletta, when something happened with him, uh, you know, they shortened up the track because they realized that the speeds these things are going, they need that extra 320 feet to shut down. I mean, that's how you learn. Um, that's not to say they sit back on their heels and they wait for an injury in order to make a change. But unfortunately, injuries are part of making a change. Right. Just kind of the world we live in, you know? I mean, I don't I don't by any stretch claim to know exactly how those kill boxes work that the right. that companies have. But being somewhat intelligent, 
let's face the facts. Again, like I said a minute ago, sometimes shit happens. Right. And a lot of shit happened. Right. We don't know if the airlines got cut. We don't know if the electrical power to whatever that kill box is yep. got cut. You know, the tethers on the body, would it have would it have helped? Maybe. Maybe not. Right. Would the shoot were deployed? Maybe, maybe not. Right. All right. It's it's a hard telling not knowing. If you know, some people are talking about the bodies being tethered to the chassis and making an explosion or a crash worse because they don't break away. Right. And then I guarantee you, if you interview 50 top fuelers and given the choice between a body flying off and possibly hurting someone in the stands or staying on and you get what you get and you ride through it. I would promise you 50 out of 50 would say, we're the monkeys driving these shit boxes. Let us assume all the responsibility. I don't want anything for my car hurting an innocent bystander. I'll take my chances. Right. I've got a, what basically amounts to a survival suit on my body. Right. I have a better chance than Pete Sanka sitting in the third row on the pit side who's going to get whacked in the friggin' chest by a piece yep. of carbon fiber coming off right. my body. Right. And it's not hypothetical. We've seen these bodies go 50 feet in the air. We've seen these bodies come down on the other side of the Jersey barriers, right? It's not like, oh, it might happen or it never happened. It's happened. It's, it's, it's happened not. a lot. Yeah. So I, so I guarantee different. you there is not one drag racer that would be okay with the fact that a piece of their car just came off and hurt someone in the stands when it could have been prevented. Right. No different than the blowovers and the dragsters. You got it. Yep. yep. Same, same exact idea, you know. Uh, I don't remember the exact time, maybe six, seven years ago. I think it was John Fink had a tire come apart at New England and one yep. of their, when they had the two car team mm -hmm. the, and you know, a piece of that wheel and tire ended up not too far from the, the stands at the divisional at New England on the pit right. side, you know, and again, that was shit happens, man. That's it's scary. Something. That's scary. And, and if someone said to, to him, there's something we could put around the wheel that if it blows up again, it might send you on a wild ride, but it's going to keep the people in the stands a lot safer. 99 out of 100 would say, yep. put it where on the I, call. I'll take my chances. Make it right. Yeah, I don't do I want someone innocent better? getting hurt. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Give me six of them. Exactly. Yep. So. But I like said, you know, the dude is – He's an older gentleman, obviously, as we all know, he's 75 years old. And you're not, right. he's not going to bounce back as quickly as he wants to or he hopes to, you know, which will probably no, and I mean, sedate the guy, basically. Get him let's, the let's be honest. With all the shit that he's been through with previous accidents, he's probably already got some lingering issues from, I mean, he's the evil Knievel of our sport. Right. Uh, how many bones has he broken? How many, you know, he's been through, how many times he's been on fire. He's got to have residual stuff going on with his body from previous stuff already. And then this on top of it, it's, you know, you're not starting out with a hundred percent healthy candidate. I wouldn't think. Um, and then, like you said, at 75 years old, you know, I, I know at 50 years old, I, it's not pretty, <laughs> and and I don't go through anything of what that guy goes through. So uh, I can only imagine. No, it wouldn't be the least bit surprising if you know his wife is henpacking him right now to say, you know, his wife, his kids, his grandkids, his yeah, yeah, you name it. Well, it's been a hell of a ride. Let's let's hang the helmet up over there yeah, while we still can. Yeah, no so. doubt. Cool. Let's do some results and get the hell out of here. All right. We have results. I actually got I'm prepared this time, believe it or Look not. Look at you. I am. I'm fantastic. 
All right. So the NHRA Mission Foods Drag Racing Series was at the fourth annual Play NHRA Virginia Nationals at Virginia Motorsports Park. The race is number nine of 20 of the NHRA Mission Foods Drag Racing Series. And just as another thing, another thought I'm going to offer before we do this, Mission Foods has really got it going on with, with the stuff they have going on in the pits, man. Yep. I was impressed at New England. I really yeah, was. That's cool. So that was, I that haven't was... been able to witness it yet, but hopefully I will soon enough. Yep. All right. So top fuel. This the gentleman's is on a roll now. I think he's officially got all his wins at every track now. Of course, I'm talking about Doug Coletta over Sean Langdon. In yeah. Top fuel. And this is the Second time this year that it's been an all Coletta final? Uh, that I'm not sure of. It might have been. I know it's at least two. It might be more. But, boy, you want to talk about a whole team that's hitting on all cylinders. Absolutely. All right. Funny car. Austin Proc in the Chevy Camaro over Bob Tasker the third in his Ford Mustang. Um, so pretty cool that all things considered with everything that happened in Virginia, uh, Team Force brought home the, uh, the Wally. Yeah, I have to believe that uh, you, you never, ever want to lose a final. But if you're going to be remotely okay with it, I have to believe Tasca was as close to okay with it as you could be considering the circumstances. Absolutely. Um, Pro Stock, Aaron Stanfield over at Dallas Glenn. And also to kind of expound on the Pro Stock stuff, did you see the the big announcement from Elite? With the new driver? With the new driver. Yes, I did. All right. Sienna Wild. God, I hope I say it right. Sienna Wild Gust. Goose. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Bear, like, bear with me. I want to. I, I hate butchering last names, even though I'm really good at it. <laughs> where's Where's Taylor when we need her? Right. All right. Sienna Wild Gust is what I'm going with. Okay. Um, um Has signed, basically, with elite motorsports to become part of their pro stock juggernaut. Pretty cool. Yep. So uh, I, right. I heard something when I was watching and hopefully Jerron's not watching because I'm sure he'll be mm -hmm. typing and commenting and correcting me like crazy, but Brittany force ran. Uh, help me out here. Who's the other girl in top fuel now? Uh, her father raced. Oh, um, I know. Isn't that terrible? Scrappers Racing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well, anyways, everyone out there knows who I'm talking about except for me. So uh, the announcer said, Brian Lone said, that that's only the fourth different female driver that Brittany Force has faced in her career. Isn't that crazy? I would say in the modern era, that's probably pretty close to true. Oh, I'm sure. I listen. If Brian Lone yeah. said it, it's true. But right. in, it, the, if in you, modern era, let me let me rephrase that. In the last ten years. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, but if you think about how much women have contributed to that sport, I mean, obviously, once it's said, you think back to the women that actually raced in Top Fuel. Right, you got Leah. Um, Shirley, obviously, the first name that always comes to mind, Shirley. Yeah, but Brittany never raced against Shirley. I'm no. talking about like in the last 10 to right, 15 so, years. Okay, yeah. So Leah. You know, I'm sure she never raced Melanie Troxel. That was before her. Yeah, that was, she, I, she probably wasn't even born then. I think Kristen Powell was before Brittany. Yep. So, yeah, you have Salinas. Yep. Yeah, Salinas. Salinas. There we go. Jasmine, is it Jasmine? Salinas? Jasmine. Yeah. That, yeah. One drives a pro stock bike, and the other one top fuel. Um, but yeah. So, and and I'm honestly, I'm having a tough time thinking of who the other two could be. Billy, we need to we need to get Billy. Billy's got to be our. Oh God, yeah. No, Billy probably has him in alphabetical order and years they competed. Categorized and by hair color and whatnot. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, he is one smart dude, boy. He is. He, he is great. 
A um, couple other things, actually. Um, I did see today, kind of backing up to Top Fuel, Julie Natas is working on her Top Fuel license in a dragster. Very, very good. Maybe she'll be number five. <laughs> she may be number five. <laughs> yep. Uh, she's got some serious family backing, too, I think. So. Cool. All right. Uh, so uh, another the... thing, Aaron Stanfield had, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm going to get the order right. Semi-final, he was 003. Final round, he was 007. Cool. So th those are a couple of pretty impressive pro stock reaction times back-to-back -back for a, for a semi-final and a final. Absolutely. All right. Uh, pro stock motorcycle. The big talk of the weekend, of course, Gage Herrera was going to be – or Ty Bob Glidden's – was it, he was, was it he was tied. He broke it. They were tied at right, nine. So he broke the and tie. He got ten with um, Bob Lidden for the most national event wins in a row. In a row, correct. Consecutive. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. So pro stock bike Gage Herrera defeated Richard Gadson. So pretty pretty impressive. I was I was curious. It it looked like it, it didn't look like it. Obviously was uh, Eddie Craywick was I don't know if he's crew chief or on the team or what the deal is for the other guy. They were teammates that raced. Um and it was uh, it made me wonder like where's he been? How come he's not racing? Uh, I'm sure there are people out there that know why, but I had no idea. It was kind of weird to to see him on the sidelines and not physically on a bike. Yep. All right. Comp eliminator. How come we haven't seen Mr. Prazer, with one of his 47 race cars. He is, you know, it's funny that our guest tonight was talking about parts and availability. Uh, oh, Rich, parts? Rich is struggling with parts. Really? Yeah, yeah. He uh, he hurt a motor, an engine, I should say. Um, was it the beginning of this year or the end of last year? I want to say it was the beginning of this year. Uh, and he just, it's parts no, off the shelf. Cool. Off the his shelf stuff. parts are hard enough to get. When his it comes to comp, stuff, right? yeah, when it comes to comp, with the exception of maybe lug nuts, there isn't a whole hell of a lot of off the shelf parts uh, that go into those cars. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, he's fallen victim to the parts people. Gotcha. All right. Well, that answers that question then. All right. Uh, comp eliminator, the mighty cavalier of Joe Carnescali defeated Michelle Costa in the Bantam. So, well, uh, that her car looks like a twin to one of uh, Frankie's uh, cars. Yeah. Yeah. So, all the Bantams kind of look alike. Yeah, they all look cool. I like them. That's what I love about comp. Don't don't do it because you know I'll have a headache. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. I I love cop for the diversity of everything. You know, yep. again, a door here in perfect case, door car against an open wheel, you know, an open cockpit car. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't this weekend because he competed in Pro Mod, but the week before, Ricky Smith was in yes. comp. Uh, he just cleaned house in comp eliminator. Right. He was testing, uh, you know, doing his thing. And uh, yeah, he was in comp working on his car. And uh, you, you hit the nail on the head, the amount of variety. I mean, on any given day, you see a, a pro mod coming up and saying, yeah, I'm going to get in comp and figure shit out with my car. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Hopefully he didn't destroy the, the poor index. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> yeah, if, but if anybody was going to do it, and the was it is it double A pro mod for comp? No, I, I, mean, I, think, it's a, I think it's AA pro mod for, for now. Comp Ricky or, Smith is a nitrous guy with pro mod. Are you allowed to run nitrous in comp, or did he have to run it NA? I don't know, right? So, check that out. I didn't even think about that when I saw it, yeah. 
All right. So again, Joe Carnescali and the Mighty Cavalier defeated Michelle Costa in her Ken Kier Bantam in Comp Eliminator at Virginia. All right. Super Stock, Jeff Atkinson defeated the singing race car driver, PJ Fouts. Yep. PJ's cool. All right. What else we got? Let's see. Stock Eliminator, Cody Phillips and the Chevy Corvette over a Cliff, Cliff Heinsohn in the Chevy Camaro. Uh, Super Comp. This is a race I was watching, obviously, because Amanda Boychesco is in it. Absolutely. Uh, Anthony Bertazzi defeated Amanda Boychesco. Only reason I know this is because I put it on Facebook. He was 002, dead on with a seven. And I don't know if it was on the post you made or if it was on... Anthony made a post himself, but I believe he made a comment and Amanda commented on it. He made a post and Amanda commented on it. And to watch those two exchange words with each other, it, it was cool to see the mutual respect between the two and giving credit where credit is due in the whole nine yards. It's it just, it's really cool to see that because uh, you know, Anthony obviously is no stranger to uh, Victory Circle, uh, and neither is Amanda. I mean, she's killed it for a long time, but it's really cool to see the mutual respect between the two. Uh, absolutely, and she she's been on a roll. I I don't know the exact stats. I know Rob uh, Keister posted it last night, maybe or maybe Sunday night. Um, but she's she's on a roll this year. Good for her. She yeah. has the ability to be on a roll often yep absolutely all right and super gas some more mid-atlantic dot 90 players uh keith mares in his porsche he didn't race the alpha this year never heard of him never i know it's uh it, does he work at the 7-eleven down the street <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh <laughs> sorry who, who who did Keith I'm beat? Glad you don't have Facebook, Keith. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know your wife does. <laughs> Who did Keith beat? All right, Keith Mayer's in the mighty Porsche. Defeated uh, Don Noblick, a.k.a. Kelly Barbados' fiance. Yep. So Beautiful Corvette. Oh, the thing's gorgeous. I think he runs Top Sportsman with it as well. I think that's gonna be. I think it's. I think his vet is gonna be like what Jason's duster is gonna be. All right, which which class this weekend? This one, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, beautiful Corvette. Uh, Don went. I don't know if this is. I'd have to check with Kelly if this is his first national event final. Um, but he went. He uh, lit the cherry, as you would as you like to say. Uh, top sportsman Sandy Wilkins. Over at Jeff Brooks, of course, Jeff drives one of the most unique cars in all the top sportsman drag racing, the Henry J. Yep. And I think that's a brand new car this year, too. All right. Pro Mod, Ricky Smith over Chris Thorne. Uh, Mountain Motor Pro Stock, Johnny Bluchino defeated Elijah Morton. Now, did you happen to notice that Randy Lynn outqualified Bo Butner? I did not. Yep. No kidding. I don't remember if it was second or third, but she was second or third. Yep. And he was further down the list, like seventh, eighth, ninth. Cool. I thought that was cool. All right. Top fuel motorcycle. Spider-Man, Larry McBride, uh, defeated Mitch Brown. Now, we talked briefly about this. 235 miles an hour in the freaking wide open like that. No. And no. he he went, am I right in saying he went in the force? Yeah, the the one I sent you the uh what Saturday night, maybe? Right. Yeah, he was, was the only one in the force. Fours, just, yep. just a tick under five seconds, but still, I mean, yeah, they were going a thousand feet. And and still. it was four hundred freaking degrees out. Yeah. Holy he, crap. I know. I know. It's it's crazy. I mean, his let's see. Uh, his winning run, the ET was was a uh, 
was a five second flat with a three on the tail end of it. Right. And 235.89 miles an hour. Now I've gone 70 on a snowmobile. I told you this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've gone 70 on a snowmobile, stuck my head just far enough above the windshield that it scared right. the other little crap out of me. And so I would never do it again. And in all reality, the sled said 70 because the track was probably spinning. It was probably more like 60. Yeah, still, <laughs> still scary as hell, right? Still the crap out of me. 235 miles an hour in the wide open with not a damn thing around you to protect you except I know. You know, what, quarter inch of leather? Right. Nope, I'm good. Cool to see, never, no way. Yeah, uh -oh. yeah. I'll shake your hand, but I ain't sitting on that seat. Nope. <laughs> And I think, don't they wear like a titanium plate on their chest too? Kevlar. Kevlar, okay. It's essentially a bulletproof vest. Yeah. Man, you can't. No, 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 no. Then they might have titanium under that too. Who the hell knows? <laughs> right, under the, yeah, underneath all the ribs and shit. They Listen, broke. when they have to start it without the rider sitting on it in fear of it blowing up when they start it, that's pretty crazy. That's just wrong on 78 different levels. Yep. All right. Junior dragster shootout. Chloe Grease uh, over Valerie Wright. And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are your winners from the fourth annual Play NHRA Virginia Nationals at Virginia Motorsports Park. Uh, again, that was race number nine of 20. They are off and running. For this coming weekend uh, at Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals at Summit Motorsports Park in the world famous Norwalk, Ohio, racing for the ice cream scoop. Yeah, right. So pound ice cream for a buck or something goofy like that. Yeah, yeah, a little bit a pound, two pounds. Yeah, I think it's a pound. Well, it's always been a pound for a buck. I don't know if inflation has changed that or not, but. Yeah, I doubt it with, with Bayer running that now. Yeah, I, right. I, so. Cool. Um, so, first off, I want to compliment you on your choice of, of uh, loungewear this evening. That is Thank you. Exquisite. Thank you very much. I actually wore it all day today, too. Sweet. Of course, you know what, you know what this one says. No, I sure do. It's in, it's, in, oh, it's in yellow, so you can't see it. Yeah, we all know what it is. Uh, if you know, you know. That's so, right. Pete, what's your what's your plan? I know you're going away this weekend, so you won't be at the night of fire. That is correct. Um, I'm actually not going away. I went away last weekend. Oh, okay. Um, the weekend before, I took the dragster up to the valley, uh, and it ran like compete crap. I'm not really sure why yet, uh, but we got the car. To the shop tonight uh we're gonna get it inside tomorrow or the next day and try and figure out why it's running the way it's running um in a perfect world i will be going to lebanon valley for the divisional if they have test and tune on thursday i'd like to make a couple of laps in it uh, to complete my uh, open cockpit license. But I will not be competing at the divisional. No. So uh, with any kind of luck, I'll be there for the weekend. Uh, I don't, I'm guessing I'll probably have to donate $200 for a tech guard and, and uh, not compete. But uh, I do want to be there. Uh, I enjoy seeing all the people hanging out. Uh, but I just, uh, I'm in no position to, uh, start competing in that car. It won't run in top dragster. And uh, I don't have the time or the patience to try and get a throttle stop program together for it in such short notice. So uh, I'll be there. Um, you know, hopefully I can make a couple laps on Thursday if they have it. Uh, if not, then I'll just be donating to NHRA and hanging out with a bunch of great people. Well, uh, Wayne will put you to work. He'll find something for you to do. Which is fine with me, too. I don't mind doing that either. All right. Well, Elijah and I are going to be there on Saturday. The return, I don't remember the last time when it was, uh, but the barbecue is returning to the Divisional Race at Lebanon Valley. Yeah. Um, it'll kick off about 
six o'clock on Saturday night. And also, uh, BJ Massiello um, is doing a ice cream social for junior dragster drivers. Uh, if you go on BJ's Facebook page, he has a sign up list, so he knows about how much to to bring. And Very I asked cool. him if if fat podcast hosts qualify as junior dragster drivers, and he said yes. Excellent. So good, good stuff. Yep. So uh, I'm going to be at Lebanon Valley this Friday um, for the Night of Fire, my first trip out there for that. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, and then I will be back next Saturday with with Junior Barnes. He's coming with me. He wants to go, which is cool. So if anybody needs crew help, he, he'll, he'll help you. Awesome. Whether we want to or not, he'll help you. That's right. <laughs> he will. Good stuff. So. He had All five right, his car part today in the driveway too. So wow. I'll show him to do some stuff. Very cool. So that's that, Steve Musser. I want to thank you for your time, my good man, and coming on and talking about the time bomb, the cherry bomb, and pleasure having him on your program. And uh, Pete, as always, like I said, we haven't talked much. It's just been a crappy week for yep. me, and uh, so not much going on anyway. So that's always good. I don't get any phone calls and get yelled at. Nothing wrong with that. You're a good boy. Yeah. Um, I would like to compliment everybody who has joined our page over the last, really, the last week and a half or so. It's yeah, it's like, been a uh, floodgate soon to be opening, right? Absolutely. It's been insane, and I, I love it. It's great. It's wonderful. Did you it, see the uh, the fake Eric Enders that wanted to comment this morning? Yes, Miss, Miss Enders got blocked. <laughs> yeah. The, the, will the real Eric Anders please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> I saw, I clicked on the profile and it had like two followers and no friends. I'm like, oh yeah, that's definitely Eric Anders. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> sure it is. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, our, our page is blowing up. It's great. I want to say thank you to everybody that has talked about us. Hopefully it's all good. And um, everybody that's joined, please make yourselves known. Um, if you have any thoughts, please share them. Usually, it's me that'll handle it because he's got a he's got real jobs. And yeah, I'm something like that. <laughs> so he, he's, I got more time than he does. Yeah, sometimes. Most of the time. Yeah. It's all and I uh, want to say thank you to the like two hundred and something people that said happy birthday to me yesterday. I really appreciate it. I clicked the double nickel, and uh, it's all downhill from here. That's it. But again, Steve Muster and Time Bomb Gang, thank you guys for hanging out and talking about us. I appreciate it. And um, if you see me Friday night at Lebanon Valley, don't be shy. Come on over and say hi. I don't bite. There you go. Now, him, you got to be careful. He, we got to make sure he gets his rabies shots. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. Well, we'll see you at Lebanon Valley the weekend after for the divisional one way or the other, Pete. Yes, you will. All right, everybody, have a great night. We'll be back. Probably realistically two weeks. So working, on, working on Yep. And uh have a great night, everybody. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for coming on and hanging out with us. Take care, guys. All right, Pete. Have a great night. Be good, brother. All right. Bye bye. All right, y'all. Have a great night. If you are Noah Walkbound, please be careful and uh have a safe trip. And good luck to everybody that's headed out there and competing. We'll talk to you all soon. Like I said, I will be at Lebanon Valley this coming Friday night for a night of fire. And um, then I'll be there Saturday, uh, the weekend after, for the divisional race. So please make sure you say hi. We'll catch you all soon. See you.